This video will explain how data parsing works on a Zebra scanner. I'll cover what is data parsing, what parsing solutions are available for Zebra scanners, I'll give you a scanning demo, and address frequently asked questions. Zebra has multiple data parsing solutions for scanners. For UDI parsing, we support all three standards, GS1, HIBIC, and ICBA. We also support GS1 label parsing and blood bag parsing. So let's look at some parsing examples. In this case, we're looking at a typical UDI label. It's the same label we were looking at earlier. The type of data that the scanner is looking to output, or basically that the host application requires, is it wants data field one, which is the data identifier. It wants a tab to go to the next field on the host application. It wants data field 10, which notice how the order is different here. It's encoded in the barcode as field 1, 17, then 10, but we're going to output it in a different order. It's going to be field 1, then 10. We'll put a tab in, and then we'll output data field 17, the expiration date, and an enter key to close out the data entry on that screen. Now let's look at a GS1 label example. GS1 labels are common in shipping and logistics operations, so you might see a supplier label. It basically outlines the raw materials being shipped into a factory. And then on the other side of that production line, after you've created all that you're looking to create and you're now shipping it somewhere, you can have a logistics label that has multiple different GS1 fields within it that all contain different information that you might want to parse. Or you might have a produce label. And Zebra's blood bag parsing solution allows you to capture all the data fields on this label in one trigger pull and output only the fields you're interested in. So in this example, you might want the data in this order, the DIN, the donation identification number first, then a tab to go to the next field on the entry screen in your host application. Maybe you want the blood type next, another tab, production code, another tab, expiration date and time, and an enter key to finish off the entry. But notice how you haven't collected all the barcodes on this screen. Special testing was left off. Data parsing allows you to pay, pick only the fields you want and exclude the others. Now let's scan some barcodes to see how data parsing works in the real world. We're using the Data Parsing on Zebra Scanner user guide. The name of the document's at the top of the page. This document's a great way to demonstrate data parsing scanning to a customer. And when you're done with the demonstration, leave the document with them. It'll help them speed their compliance testing along. All the examples in this document are real barcodes from real customers. To demonstrate data parsing, you'll need these three things. A version of 123 scan, the latest version supports data parsing. A scanner, and this document. Barcode example one is a UDI label. It has fields one, 17, and 10. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scan this all in one trigger pull and I'll put field one, a tab, and then 10, not field 17, a tab, field 17, and a character turn. You're going to see the results coming out in Microsoft Notepad on the side, and I'll be scanning with a DS8108 healthcare unit. So I'm going to pull the trigger, and as quick as I pull the trigger, the data shows up at the window, and the data shows up in the order we requested, which is the device identifier first, the batch and lot number, and the expiration date next. For the rest of the examples, the scanner is going to be programmed the same way it was in example one. In example two here, we're going to scan two barcodes in one trigger pull. Notice how field one is in the first barcode, 17 and 10 is in the second barcode. And as fast as I pull the trigger, the data comes out. Example three is the same as example two with one difference. I've separated the two barcodes. So one's at the top of the page, the second one's at the bottom of the page. And this is to simulate the craziness you're going to see in certain environments where you shouldn't have to know the barcode you're aiming at, or did you get all the right data? So in this example, I'm going to take the scanner and aim at the top barcode up here. I'm going to count to 10, slowly wander down, keeping the trigger pulled and depressed the whole time. And when it gets to the bottom set of barcodes, it's going to decode the data and output it over here. I'm now pulling the trigger on the top barcode. I'm gonna to count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm gonna wander down, and as soon as it sees the barcode on the bottom of the page, 
it outputs all the data that it's supposed to. In example six, we're going to handle error conditions. So you see field one here, you see field 10, but you don't see field 17. It's missing from this barcode. So part of the solution is knowing you can handle real world scenarios, which includes things that aren't printed the way they're supposed to be. So I'm going to pull the trigger. It's going to give me an error beep and output the data. So I'm doing that now. I'm pulling the trigger now. When I let go of the trigger, you get the error beep and the data shows up. You also have the option to program it so no, do no data shows up. So what you got here was field 1, field 10. Field 17 is actually here, but blank, so you could type it in if you want. So what we've really done is give you all the data we have and allowed you to type in the missing fields. A setting in 123 scan, which is where you program the scanner, also says, if I don't have the fields I need, all of them, don't give me anything. So you really have your option. You could do it either way. In example nine, we're gonna handle a very common scenario. I wanted field one, 10, and 17. I don't know what field 30 is. I don't know what field 21 is, but I don't want them. My host system can't handle them. So with our scanner, you can scan it and program the fields you want. It will ignore the others. So I'm gonna first aim at the data matrix. When I pull the trigger, the data comes right out. Now I'm gonna aim at the 1D barcodes and pull the trigger. Data comes right out again, and if you notice, the data is the exact same because the data that's encoded in this barcode and in these two barcodes is the same. It doesn't matter which one you hit with the scanner, you'll get the output you need, and you'll ignore the fields that aren't supposed to be included in the host output. In example 10, what's going to be interesting is I'm scanning a shipping label. It has three stacked barcodes, 1D barcodes. I'm going to pull the trigger and decode all of them in one one trigger pull. I'm going to output fields 00, 2, 10, 37, and 400 in this order with these separator fields in between them, but I'm going to ignore field 11 right here. I'm going to take my scanner, pull the trigger, and there's all the data, but no field 11. So now that we have discussed how UDI works, the next question is how do I program it to my scanner? And that's simple. You use 123 scan. So the first thing you want to do is upgrade the firmware on your scanner to make sure that you support this new capability. So you click this button and update your scanner to the latest firmware. I've already done it on my DS81 series scanner. It's release 25 for the corded device. The release notes will explain the details. The release notes right here say UDI parsing support. That also includes data parsing. The next thing you want to do is create a new configuration file. My scanner's connected, so I'm going to hit the first button, and there it is. There's another look at the release notes saying UDI parsing is supported. The first thing you want to do is enable the symbologies. For data matrix, GS1 data matrix and GS1 QR code must be turned on. The next thing is you modify data. Let's select which parsing technology we want, UDI view edit and here's our screen to program a data parsing rule first thing you do enable parsing i'm going to clear the existing rule i'm going to drag over field one i'm going to put a tab next i'm going to put batch and lot number another tab expiration date and it is a date format field so you have the ability to change the format. Currently it's year, year, month, month, day, day, which is the GS1 standard, but any one of these formats will be supported. An enter key. Now, if you happen to have a really slow system, maybe you wanna put a pause between the data being transmitted. You could pick the duration of the pause, or no pause at all. And it's that simple. Now, other things can also be sent as field separators. Symbols can be sent, numbers, keyboard characters, control characters. So you have a number of options. Now let's go ahead and load this setting to the scanner. And with that, I'm done programming. For step-by-step -step instruction, see Appendix B of the Data Parsing on Zebra Scanner User Guide.
Now from the data parsing on ZebraScanner user guide, let's go through some frequently asked questions. Number four, what ZebraScanner support data parsing technology? The DS81 series supports data parsing right now, and starting at late Q3, early Q4 of this year, the DS9908, the DS4608, and the DS36 series will also support this capability. FAQ 5, where can I get a complete list of GS1 data fields? The GS1 organization has a complete list of all the data fields they support. Just click here, and 123Scan supports that complete set. FAQ 15, how many data fields can be programmed within a single data parsing rule? A data parsing rule can be written with up to 15 data fields. FAQ 16, how many field separators can be inserted between two data fields? Up to 10 field separators can be inserted between two data fields, with the only exception being a pause. You can only insert one pause, but the pause is programmable. FAQ 28. What if my data matrix data is coming out incorrectly? The likely root cause of your problem is you need to enable the GS1 data matrix symbology. If you don't, when you scan the data, all the data will come out in one blob of information including the field numbers like 1, 10. You won't get the data parsed, but you'll get it as one big group. All you got to do to fix that, turn on the GS1 data matrix symbology.